Welcome and congratulations. Uh, you have actually unlocked a exclusive training that goes along with the workbook that you've just downloaded. So we're going to dive right into it. Thank you so much for taking the time to uh, download this workbook. I think it's really going to be useful for helping you identify your message, looking for who it is that you're trying to attract, developing a sales process that's simple and effective, and then also doing the follow-up because we all know that the money is made in the follow-up. So we're going to dive right into this. Um, you can actually get a full 60 minute training that's uh, down in the links below. Uh, but before you do that, watch this video, um, complete the workbook because that workbook is going to go directly with that webinar. It's going to help you uh, really put all the pieces together and really put out a great marketing campaign. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to share my screen and show you uh, the workbook that, work, workbook that you put uh, that you've signed up for, excuse me. So this is the research and development workbook. This is designed to help you understand your market, speak to them directly, and then sell them with your message. Okay. So there's a couple things that, uh, up first. Um, we've got the first, the this uh, sales funnel discussion Facebook group. So if you're not a part of the Facebook group already, go ahead and join that today. Every Tuesday and Thursday at 2 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, I go live and talk about ads, funnels, and follow-up. Um, there's a link right here, so you can click directly here, or you can go to Facebook and look up Sales Funnel Discussion Group. Okay, if we move on, then we move into the demographic. Okay, the reason that I put to this together is because in order for you to market in an effective way, you really need to know your market. You need to know who it is you're advertising to. You need to know who you're speaking to because it's like there's basically a difference in, for example, if you were marketing to help people make more money, everybody wants to make more money. So your message is very broad. So if you can niche down your message, you can identify who it's for and where they're currently at and what their needs and desires are then you can speak directly to that while repelling all the people that aren't a great fit for, you know, maybe what, what your offer is, because we don't necessarily want to work with everybody. At the end of the day, I think, you know, all of us want to work with that, you know, help a lot of people, but in order to help a lot of people, we have to be very specific with our message because um, there's specific people looking for our specific solution, right? Okay, so we get into the, dem the demographic. Some of this is going to be fairly, um, uh, you know, you've, you've done this before, right? Where what's the age, what's the customer avatar, right? But it's more important than probably anything. If you don't do this right, your whole marketing campaigns are going to completely be off. And the, the leads that you attract into your business aren't going to be qualified and they're going to be just, you're going to be wasting money on those people that aren't qualified. So let's do this right. Let's really spend some time and really get, um, you know, really intentional about who we want to attract into our business. This is very, very important. Okay. What is their age range? So, uh, you know, 25 to 45 years old, What's their gender, male or female? Sometimes, most of the time, it's going to be both. But you know, for your product, you'll know the location. Maybe it's the U.S. Maybe it's a specific state. Maybe it's a specific city. You know, or it's worldwide. But you need to know those things. Are they married or they're single? Um, are they divorced? Are they white, Caucasian, Asian, uh, African American, so on and so forth? And this isn't law, but at the same time what you were trying to understand is what does that person look like? What can we put a picture in our mind of what that person looks like? Okay. Because when you, you know, it's like talking to your best friend and that's really where you want to get to is where you can have a conversation with your best friend. Okay. So what's their average income? You know, uh, if you're trying to sell a, let's say, let's go back into business opportunity, a, system that's designed to help people make more money we know that those people are already making money so what 
type of income range are they sitting within currently? Um, you know, is that six figures a year, seven figures, eight figures a year, depending on your product or service, or are they just beginning? See, those are really critical things to understand and uh, come up with. What are their education level? Are, you know, did they go to high school? Did they not? Did they graduate? Did they not? Uh, did they go to college? Maybe they did more of a trade school. Maybe they did more of online schooling where someone like me bought a bunch of courses, probably like you and uh, try to learn themselves, okay? Uh, political affiliations, Democrat, Republican, liberal. This is gonna tell you about the way that they see the world, okay? Again, not law, but we're really trying to understand our prospect. Uh, what are their prior purchases? So in your marketplace, what are some of the things that they have bought that um, did and didn't work? You know, it, it doesn't really matter if it did or didn't at this point. Um, it's more about what they did buy. So we can go and look at those things and figure out why they may have bought them. Okay. What are the experts that they're following? You know, um, you can do a quick Facebook search. Um, and this is going to be maybe somebody that's in a, a competitor in your niche. Um, but this is also in their personality, whatever they're interested in. It doesn't have to be your niche. It, maybe it's cooking. You know, maybe it's home development, maybe it's uh, biz op, maybe it's, you know, whatever it is. So identify those things and write as many of these things as you can. Like, don't waste, don't like worry about spending too much time on this. That's, this is the most important element. So really focus on who they're following and their purchases and really who they are. Okay. Uh, what are the movies and TV shows that they watch? Are they watching you know, the, um, what is it? The, uh, the one where the woman gets married to a man on TV, you know, I forgot what that's called, but anyway, that's going to tell you about people, or maybe they're more into like Bear Grylls, you know, where it's survival, or maybe it's, you know, Rick and Morty. Um, but those characteristics of those movies are telling you more about that person. Okay, what periodicals, magazines, books, and forums are they reading and a part of? Uh, a really great place that you can go is Amazon uh, and find, this is actually more for reviews. I would say more Reddit. Uh, if you, can, you go to Reddit, you can find different forums where people are involved in uh, subjects based on your topic or your topic, excuse me. Um, maybe some magazines you can go to, the New York Times, um, and there's plenty of other ones that you can find that are revolved around maybe more of your topic, but write those down, spend some time here. We move on to the prospect analysis, wants and desires. What do they really, really want? You know, maybe they want more money, uh, excuse me, want more money, uh, want more time, want more prestige, want more, uh, health, want more, uh, self-confidence. You know, what are their desires? You know, they want to be more connected with their family. They want to have more freedom in doing what they want with their money, you know, traveling, stuff like that. What are their emotions and their feelings currently? And this is all a current state. So emotions and feelings, they're, maybe they're overwhelmed, but maybe they're happy or maybe they are content. Um, you know, these are things you want to understand. So when you construct your marketing message, then you can start talking to these pain points. So, you know, maybe they're overwhelmed, tired, fatigued, um, stressed out, whatever the case may be. Uh, what are their beliefs and identification? So this is going to be something like uh, the engineer is more analytical, right? Um, what are their beliefs? So maybe they believe that internet marketing is hard or losing weight is hard, or their belief is that, um, you know, only the elite can actually get the results that they want, you know? Um, then we move into your prospects. Your prospects wants to gain X, right? So they want to gain uh, more more fulfillment. They want to gain more time in their life. They want to gain more money. They want to gain more uh, happiness, 
et cetera. Your prospect wants to be more connected. They want to be more, um, let's say, be healthier, be faster, be stronger, be more flexible, be more financially stable, you know? And then your prospect wants to do, so they want to travel, they want to uh, spend more time with their family, they want to, these are more physical, like uh, external things that they might want to do. And then your prospect wants to save money, they want to save time, they want to save uh, some of their freedom, they want to save their resources they want to what do they really want to save it's more of like what are they attached to that they're trying to keep and then your prospect wants to avoid what are they trying to neglect or not necessarily neglect but just avoid let's go with avoid um they want to avo avoid pain they want to avoid uh wasting time they want to avoid wasting money they want to avoid um seeming like uh, someone that's not an expert, they want to avoid this and that. There's a lot of things you can come up with. And right here, I've come up with uh, some common desires that you can maybe fuel some inspiration upon in your uh, research and development within this workbook. Okay, then we move into prospect analysis continued, the ideal customer exercise. Imagine the client that is your greatest success story. What results did they get from working with you? And list their exact results. What other transform work, uh, transformations happened in their life because of these results? So, you know, uh, in my world, my best success story is somebody that takes their business from six to seven and eight figures. Um, and they've done it through just providing value to their marketplace, right? I, my very best client, they, all they did was go live every day. My job was to provide the backend system that did the follow-up and the automation of everything so that they could spend more time doing what they really wanted. And so that's the greatest success story that I could think of, you know, taking a, a business and 10 Xing their business while not having, having them have to do a bunch more work. All they had to do was do what they were already passionate about. So what are the exact results? They made two and a half million dollars in nine months. Um, they built a six, successful online brand uh, of over 200,000 followers within that nine months. You know, they, they were currently already at a uh, tens of thousands and made it to 200,000. Um, but they were also able to start taking uh, private jets to wherever they wanted. They provided a life for their family that they could have whatever they wanted, you know, um, and really develop that brand. So those are some examples. And then describe some of the secondary benefits, 10K per month, in exchange for more time with their family. So in that same result, uh, my client was able to basically take all of 2021 off and spend that time with his son and with his family. So what are the secondary benefits? Yes, they made more money, but what happened as a result of them getting that money? What were they able to do with that money, right? Okay, moving on prospect now and after so where are they currently at and where will they be once they go through your product or service uh their results right now maybe their results right now are um you know they're getting sales here and there but not quite the results they wanted but afterwards they're able to develop an automated system that generates you know 10 to six figures per month right the average experience right now might be overwhelm, stress, anxiety, but afterwards it's comfort and confidence and happiness and fulfillment. Now, and then the status, is, right now they feel that they're broke or uh, not good enough. And then after they feel like they're just rich and completely abundant and um, able to give back to those around them, 
And then their current feelings now are, like I said, maybe some of it may be a little bit redundant, but spend some time here, stressed, um, worried, overwhelmed. And then after they're feeling just on top of the world, like nothing can affect them, that the world is theirs, right? So now that we've gotten a little bit clearer on our prospect, we want to move into our competitors because our competitors are going to tell us a lot about what we can offer and how to actually make it better. Because the reality of it is, as we don't want to invent, uh, reinvent the wheel, it, it doesn't make sense. There's a lot of people out there that are already putting thousands and thousands and thousands millions, let's say, excuse me, millions of dollars into advertising and testing to figure out what actually works. So we're going to find what works and make it better. Okay. So complete this for at least five competitors. You want to find some of the best people in your niche. Uh, and it doesn't have to be direct. Maybe it's something maybe within the atmosphere that you're within. Uh, it doesn't have to be very specific, but uh, if it's the more specific, the better. But if you can't find anything, you can start to branch out and find, you know, other influencers or brands that are doing something in the same area. Maybe it's finance. Uh, instead of in, investing in crypto, let's say, for example, you're just looking at finance, right? Or investing, let's call it investing, but crypto is more of a niche market. So, you can kind of broaden your spectrum. Okay. When we look at that, we want to find what their hook is. Okay. What is capturing the attention of their prospect to get them to read or watch or consume or click whatever it is that they're offering? Um, what is their prim primary marketing promise? So this is going to be something like, um, you're going to lose this much weight in this much time, right? And you can't really do that with Facebook uh, policies. So if you're in the fitness industry, uh, just make sure you understand the guidelines before you advertise or they'll shut your account down. Uh, what's their delivery mechanism? So how are they actually fulfilling the product? Is that going to be like PDFs? Is it a course? Is it a webinar? Is it a training? Is it uh, a call, a one-on-one -on -one call? You know, what is those? At, what are those aspects? What's the unique selling proposition? So, what's what is unique about what they're offering that's different from the rest of the market? Um, you know, so if it was keto, you know, for example. What's, what's unique about that might be that they're offering ketogenic or like ketones, right? The ketones actually fulfill the blood and allow your body to create ketones within the body and burn fat while you're still eating foods. I used to spend some time in this market, so I'm able to use this as an example pretty well. Um, but then what are their general marketing claims? Do this and in this amount of time, you know, um, that you will do that, you'll be able to get this result without having to do this. Um, you know, this many steps to get X result. What are their claims? What are they saying that you'll get as a, re a result of working with their product or service? What are their proof points? This is going to be your testimonials. Uh, it's going to be the, um, the, the, maybe their own personal results. Uh, and then how are they showing those personal results? Okay. And then benefit statements. So this is going to be, you're going to get this because, it, it, but it, this is going to help you do X, Y, and Z. And then it goes on to list a bunch of the benefits to that specific offer. What are the price and terms? Is it, and, and you want to understand this, and this is why you do this for like five different competitors. So you can take all of that data, compile it and see what works best, right? But price and terms, you know, is it $9? Is it 47? Is it 297? Is it 2997? 
And then the terms is, is it, do they have payment options or maybe it's a free trial or a 14 day trial? What are those terms? Features and deliverables. Uh, so I might've gotten the delivery mechanism and the features and deliverables mixed up. So features and deliverables is gonna be your PDFs, your membership area, your uh, Facebook groups, stuff like that, where your delivery mechanism is going to be, whether that's uh, you know weekly calls or a group setting or a membership area as a whole. Um, so then we move on to bonuses and premiums. So always have bonuses right you want to look at those bonuses and a lot of times those bonuses are actually more valuable than the actual offer that's being offered um, and so you want to look at those list all of them out um, and see a lot of times they're going to say this bonus is worth this much this bonus is worth this much this bonus is worth this much okay write all those down uh, your risk reversal is your 30 60 90 lifetime guarantee Money back guarantee. So if you and, and read read the context of it, is it unconditional? You know, you go through the course, and you, even if you got the result and you're just a dickhead, you could get your money back and keep the course. Or maybe it's 30 days. If you just don't like it at all, we'll give you a portion of your money. Like there's a lot of ways that people are doing it, but uh, you really need to understand what your market is doing. Okay. On the influencers page, uh, make a list of influencers or competitors that are covering the same subject or industry that your product or service is in. Um, so you need to list the name and the brand or name or um, this is and then your the website. And I would look for pages that are not their website homepage. I'm looking for their funnel pages, their top end funnel pages. This is, this is gonna be a lot of like download pages or registration pages or whatever. You put those there because we're looking for funnels that we can uh, not copy, but emulate. So put those there. What are their offers? Um, this is going to go kind of back into the competitor analysis page, but we want to look at all the things that are part of that offer, including the bonuses. So do that for five pages. So these two pages kind of work uh, congruently. Now, this may be one of the first pages, um, but we need to make sure that we are niching down. Um, we want to make sure that we're not in a general uh, they call it a red ocean. If you study anything of Russell Brunson's, he talks about red ocean where um, there's a lot of people feasting within the same ocean. So it becomes bloody, uh, which is going to be something like fitness or relationships or uh, finances. Um, those are very general topics where a lot of people are producing products and services. Now, the reason we want to do this is so we can niche down and create our own blue ocean, something that we can actually have some market space in and not be competing with the entire world. So what are you an expert in? Of these, what niches are you most equipped to help people? Of these, what niche are you the most passionate about teaching? What laser focused aspects of this niche are you an expert in? And of these, what are the most equipped, uh, what are you most equipped to help people with? Okay, this is really gonna get you real specific on um, how you actually help people. Okay, this is the niche down next section is again, if we look at the market, let's say it's wealth, then we've got a sub market of maybe let's say real estate. And then the niche market is uh, first time home buyers, right? Or luxury real estate. Uh, real estate as a whole is a red market, but maybe luxury real estate requires a different type of expertise or whatever. Now, let's move into market awareness. So there's five stages of market awareness. This is gonna help you understand where your, your prospect currently is within your 
niche market. Okay. Um, stage one is a brand new market. That means you're first to the market and advertising. And I have on the second, uh, third page here down here, let's move this up. Uh, actually I can't. So on the third page, so stage one, when you have a brand new market or a brand new product and are first to your market, making advertising simple, because all you have to do is talk about its benefits. Okay. It's just like, Hey, you've never heard about this and it can help you do this. Get it right now. Stage two, it's a ramp up phase where there's now more competition and requires additional pers persuasion. So this is going to be things like adding specific benefits. Um, you're, you're creating more of a stack within your offer. It's, it's not keto, it's, it, it's keto, but you're also, you know, uh, it's not only going to help you with losing weight, but it's going to help you with your mental clarity, but it's also going to help you with, uh, you know, your, the clarity of your skin, and it's going to help you with water retention, whatever that may be. So you're specifying those things. Stage three, uh, when the market is aware of the solution, but has heard the claims and is now looking at how the product works instead of what it can actually do for them. So you know, when you, when you think of fitness, it's like, oh yeah, all these things can help me lose weight, but that's not that attractive anymore. So now you have to get into how it actually works. In the, in the case of keto, the how might be cutting carbs and adding more fat to your diet. Um, that's becoming more boring and mundane. So you know, but let's say that was the stage that it was at. You're talking about car uh, lowering your carb intake and increasing your fat intake to actually lose fat, right? That was attractive back when that was hot. So stage four, similar to stage three, but now we're introducing specifics, how to get X without Y. So we're removing a negative. It introduces the mechanism and how it works and generally stays on the positive while removing a negative, like cold calling, networking, bugging friends and family, cutting carbs, um, you know, DMing people online, um, doing presentations in front of hundreds of people, whatever their frustration is, you're removing that negative from them. They already know of the solution, but there's something that's blocking them from actually getting that result. Um, or maybe it's something that doesn't seem attractive to them that prevents them if, from even trying that you can remove from that for them to help them get the result that they want. Stage five, most people don't actually make it to the stage because they're either dying out or becoming boring. This happens in mass markets like fitness and biz up. Okay. Like I said, uh, keto as a, uh, general topic, <coughs> excuse me, um, is at stage five. You can't just pitch keto anymore. So you really have to, what it talks about in stage five is that you have to attack a new um, desire altogether or a new pain point, excuse me. So in the case of keto, it may not be losing weight, but, or looking better, but it might be living longer and having better connections with your family, you know, and then you'd have to build a, a, a product around that. So most people aren't going to be here, but it is stage five. So be aware of that. If you're being too broad, uh, move back up into this slide here with niche down and make sure that you have your own niche market. Okay. And then if we look at the triangle of market awareness, uh, we've got people that are completely unaware that they have a problem. We've got people aware that they have, there's a problem out there, there's a solution out there, but they're not quite sure. Then we move into problems. So they know that they have a problem, but they're not aware of the solution. Then we move into the solution. So their solution aware, they know that there's a way to get it. Um, and then at the top, we've got most aware. So most aware is, is typically the, has the most upside potential because they know the solution, they know the problem, and they're, they're just, they're ready to pull the trigger. 
So this is a scale of how willing a person is to pull that trigger. But as we, the lower we are on that totem, uh, the harder it is to convert. If you have somebody that isn't aware that they actually have a problem, you have to actually start to tell stories that get them to relate with you and how that story is actually affecting their life so that they actually become aware. Now we move them up a scale and, and then move them into the problem, the solution, and then make them completely aware so that they will buy. So it's harder to convert at the bottom and uh, we have more potential at the top, okay? Uh, on our research, make a list of Facebook groups and forums where your potential customers congregate and discuss their problems, desires, and challenges, okay? This, you know, all these are all like Facebook groups. Something you can do with Facebook groups is go in, in and, uh, see how people talk, what they're talking about, what their desires are, what their frustrations are. Uh, forums like Reddit, uh, medium.com. Uh, there's a lot of like steamit.com. There's a lot of uh, blogs and stuff where you can post the links. This is for you. So, you know, as, as serious as you are about identifying your customer and figuring out how to uh, talk directly to them and get them to buy your products or services because they, you know, they really need those things. You'll, you'll spend some time on this. So put those links there, go back to them. This is a resource for you to continuously do that research, figure out where your market is, continuously stay in the loop. Okay. Um, now further into research, we look at books on Amazon covering the same course topic. Um, read the table of contents and list out the concepts that you may have forgotten to cover. Um, so if you are creating a course or maybe not, maybe you are providing a service, but want to have your own list or arsenal of things that you can provide to your customer, go to Amazon. Uh, let's say for example, keto, and we'll stay on the same course of things. Keto, you look up a keto book on Amazon, you go to the, um, the table of contents and it's going to give you a list of each of the chapters. Those chapters are actually lessons that you can teach on. So you're creating more value within your membership course or within your product or service. Okay. Uh, now you need to develop your three pillars, your three pillars. And if we look at the top, we've got a frowny face, and at the bottom, we got a smiley face. This is the the point from where they currently are to where they want to be. Okay, on that path, there are three to five major steps that they need to take in order to get the desired result. So list those out. You can do. I would say keep it a maximum of five and a minimum of three. But for example, mine are messaging, so you need to figure out your who. Okay. Step number two is you need to provide value. And then step number three is you need to have a process, something that does everything on autopilot. So now that you have those three main pillars, you can actually create sub pillars within, the, within those. This is going to help you create content and value for your marketplace. So underneath messaging, I have research, refined marketing statement, big domino. Under value, I have overcoming objections, frameworks for uh, creating content, stuff like that, uh, live content, or even just organic. Then step number three is the process. So we've got follow-up, funnels, webinars, et cetera, right? So what are your three core pillars? Fill this out for yourself. Then we move into messaging. So this, now it's really all starting together. I'm sure you can start to see like, okay, I'm really starting to understand who it is, what my pro, uh, competitors are talking about and how I can actually create something better. So what your refined marketing statement is, I help audience, so your perfect prospect, and that's why we're doing these steps first with the research and the customer avatar. I help that audience, perfect prospect, who do you really wanna work with, get tangible end result, Okay, and I'll update these slides, but um, that needs to be tangible. It needs to be an end result. You can't say make more money. You can't say achieve big goals, right? Because what does that even look like? 
you can't, if you're, if you're the person on the other end and you really need to do this is put yourself in that person's shoes. You can't say reach big goals because everybody has, it's all, um, it's all a perspective of the self. It's, it's all different. It's different than anybody else. Everybody else has their own goals. So what does these big goals mean? So be specific. So it's like, you know, get a thousand leads in 10 days. You know, that's a tangible end result. It's like, oh, well, I want a thousand leads in 10 days, right? So, but then we move into the without, without, uh, this is going to be the old mechanism. So the old way of doing things, if you're a real estate agent, maybe you're getting leads from Zillow and those leads from Zillow are costing you half of your profit every time you sell a house. So that's pretty, that's, uh, that's annoying. That's, I mean, I wouldn't want to do that. So we're going to eliminate that for you. But in order to get that result of maybe, you know, selling 10 homes a month, without Zillow leads, we're going to run webinars and do a follow-up, automated follow-up system. Okay, so you see how that works. Now, our big domino statement, this is not something that you wanna commu communicate with your prospect. This is for you, this is internal. If I can make real estate agents, okay, audience, believe that the only way to tangible end result, get 10 deals a month is by doing webinars and follow-up funnels. And the only way to close those deals is through um, webinars. Then all objections become irrelevant and they must have invest. So you're really identifying what the mechanism is that they get the result through that they're actually uh, dodging a previous mechanism um, to get the desired result. This is this is helping you construct your message, okay? And then we move into roadblock statement. The truth is you don't need to blank. You don't need to advertise on Zillow anymore, okay? In order to get 10 deals a month, you just need to run webinars and follow-up funnels, okay? Some of it might seem a little bit redundant, but this is the most important phase of your marketing campaigns. And if you don't do it right, you're attracting in some of the wrong leads and you're wasting your money on your advertisements. Okay. Uh, now we move into content. So this is where the fun starts. Now that we know who it is and what we're offering and how we're offering it, this is the framework that you're going to use for your advertisements, for your organic uh, videos on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, it's the same throughout. And this framework, you can literally just remember the main bullet points, intro, call to action, point one through three, recap, call to action, and close. If you can remember those things, your content becomes so much smoother because you've got your intro. Hey, this is Shane Kipper, and you're about to learn this. And then we go into the call to action. But before we get started, go to callwithshane.com where you'll get access to a 60 minute free training that's all designed around advertising funnels and follow-up. And then you move right into the points. Okay, so now that we've covered that, number point number one is that you don't need Zillow. Point number two is that you don't need to DM, you know, people um, on social media. Point number three is that you don't need to bug your family's, family and friends. Okay, now something I want to point out with the points one through three, point one is actually designed to um, make people aware of the new solution. So that's going to be webinars. So point number one might be uh, in regards to webinars. Point number one is you need to create a, a video that presents who you are, what you do, how you help them, and what they need to do next. And it, it might be something as simple as that. It doesn't have to be a 60 minute webinar. It could be, you know, a 10 minute webinar. Um, but then point two and three. So point two is actually an internal belief, something that's actually holding them back that they think is actually holding them back from doing a webinar. Uh, well, I'm not good on camera. 
or I'm not good enough or whatever the case may be. It's an internal, something within themselves that's holding them back. Now, number three is an external belief. So that external belief is going to be money, it's going to be enough influence, um, it's going to be, um, you know, having the right personal trainer, it's going to be, you know, having uh, an accountant to manage their money, things like that. Okay, then now we go into the recap. Your recap's real simple. It's like, hey, you need to run webinars, you can do it, and you don't need an accountant. Um, and then you do your call to action. So if you like this video, make sure you go to callwithshane.com. I have a free 60 minute training that's going to teach you everything you need to know about ads, funnels, and follow up. And that's it for today. Make sure you like, subscribe, and comment uh, your favorite takeaway, something like that, right? Now let's move into objections. Your objections are really big. You need to understand your objections before they actually come up. So that way your customer doesn't even have time to think about the objections as you're going through your video sales letters, as you're going through sales copy, as you're going through your webinars, whatever it may be. You need to know these things so you can cover them in your videos and in your sales, sales copy. As you engage your audience, uh, do lives, Q and A's, write down a short summary of any objections you get, a one sentence truth statement that's proclaiming why it's actually a false belief and a short description of the story you, you told to illustrate this truth and overcome the objection. Uh, try to only include truth stories that worked and seemed to overcome the objection to their satisfaction. <coughs> Excuse me. So what's the objection? What's the reality of it? And then tell a story of how that objection is irrelevant and do that a few times. Do as many as you, as many as you can. Don't do just three um, because the more you have in your tool belt, the better your chances are. Now, no matter if you're selling a course or you're a service provider or a consultant, what is your offer stack? We're all gonna have offer stacks. We're gonna have our main offer. Let's say it is a course. Well, our course is really cool thing masterclass, okay? But in this, it's gonna help you break down the modules because each of the modules within that masterclass have its own value. So this is a great way of stacking your offer uh, and providing more value without having to think of a bunch of other things to include in your offer. Although, you know, those are things that we'll get into within the bonus uh, bonuses. So module one, you're going to, it's, it's your welcome. It's going to get you set up with everything you need to build a successful online business. Module two is the mindset section where we really need to get you on the same page as a millionaire earner. Value, uh, value number three or module number three is which accounts you need to set up in order to create a successful online business. But module number four is, um, you know, building each of the processes. And then number five is advertising. Number six is fulfilling, so on and so forth. Then we get into our bonuses. Those bonuses is where we can say, hey, this is the advanced advertising um, course that I developed maybe a couple of weeks ago that I want to give you in exchange for you taking advantage of this offer today. Uh, bonus number two is my exact sequences that are producing 10x results for my clients. Uh, bonus number three is the templated sales funnel that you can actually implant into your uh, click funnels today so that all you have to do is do some redesign, very, very small redesigns. So you understand what the bonuses are like, you understand what the modules are for. Okay, now I get into funnel frameworks, depending on what your product or service is, whether that's free all the way to 297, which is the third one down, we're gonna have more of a five-step funnel framework where we're giving a, free, a freebie a, and then moving into a sales page that's either, either or, or both, a video sales letter and or sales copy um, that's pitching the main offer, which could be about 297, I would say. If you move past that, we'll move into the mid tier, which I'll show you in a sec. Then uh, after the sales page, 
we get them to check out, buy the product, and then we give upsells and downsells. So if they say, if they buy, then we say, hey, here's this actual, uh, here's actually this advertising course that you can get access to for a discounted rate that you won't get anywhere on the internet. If they don't take it, then we give them a downsell that might be the same thing, but discounted or something completely different that's not as expensive, but still relevant to the main offer and make sure, you know, when you do sales, upsells and downsells, it has to be relevant to the main offer. Don't offer, you know, funnel building. And then um, let's say, you know, how to diet for entrepreneurs. It just doesn't make sense. Okay. Moving into mid, uh, mid tier ticketing, ticket offers. Uh, we're going to do more of a live or automated and or because typically it's it's a good idea to do your live uh, webinars a few times to understand your pitch to really dial that in and then move into an automated scenario where you can trim think trim the fat and but in in the live scenario you can get a lot of questions answered for yourself to understand where your prospect is at what what their objections are stuff like that and see where people are falling off and what you can uh, move uh, um, update and stuff like that. So that way, when you do your automated webinar, it's more concise and really focused on what's important to your customer. Um, if we look at this, we've got our registration that goes to the webinar um, that sends out a replay. If they don't, they don't view the webinar or they're late or they've left early. Um, there's a lot of ways you can sequence that. And then if they do see the offer and click, they will go to the checkout. And if they purchase, they'll go to the confirmation and be able to get the fulfillment of whatever it is that they're buying. Um, now, in the live scenario, we send an indoctrination sequence that gets that person to know us better. It's saying, this is who we are. This is how we help people. Maybe some case studies of people that we've worked with in the past or videos of objections that they might, might be currently having. And then also just getting them psyched up to actually attend, you know, that's part of the heavy lifting is getting them there. Yeah, you can get them to register, but if they actually make it to the live webinar is another story. So you need to put in that work, but a lot of that work can be automated. Now the high ticket book a call framework, very similar, go to re registration. We still have that indoctrination se sequence, get to know me sequence to the webinar, to a scheduling page and then a phone close because when we're talking you know, $2,500 or more, we need to be on the phone maybe to answer some questions. If we do the webinar properly, the phone call can be more of an application. So you can actually insert an application before they schedule. Um, and I would actually recommend that depending on what your product or service is, is adding an application page where in order for them to actually schedule, they have to meet certain criteria. You know, if you are offering something that's $2,500 or more, you need to know that they're willing to invest and that, well, number one, that they have the money and number two, that they actually are willing to spend that money to get the result. Um, and that they're ready to take action now. Like we don't want people wasting time. We want people that are the best fit for our services. Okay. And then, you know, it has some examples here. We, from our scheduling page, we can send reminders. Uh, and then from the phone, um, whether or not we close them or not, we can put them into a CRM for our team to follow up with or ourselves, depending on how big your team is. And then lastly, we've got our testimonial. So once you've gotten some people results, maybe you already have some results. This is your framework for sending people so that they can make a video or even just a text, uh, a comment on Facebook that says what the problem was that they had prior to joining your product or service. Why did they choose to join your product or service specifically other than any other product? And then what made the process of using your product or service so effective? And as a result of implementing the program, what was the outcome? And then how has their chain, her, excuse me, how has their life changed since achieving the outcome? 
So really gives them a, a solid framework for creating videos that not only establishes that they've been working with you and your products or service, but how, what results they got and how they got it. So that you can put those on your sales pages and send that in follow-up, so on and so forth. Okay. Now um, you can actually get access to a, my free webinar. All you have to do is click this button right here and it'll take you uh, to the registration page, just give your name and email and uh, you'll get access to that training. It's the greatest marketing sin, five greatest marketing sins responsible for all, over 50% of all lost opportunity and how you can actually instantly uh, stop the leaks. Okay. And if you haven't joined already, make sure you click this link right here to join the sales funnel discussion group where I go live Tuesdays and Thursdays at 2 p.m. Mountain Standard Time covering ads, funnels, and follow-up. And then follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube for more weekly content. And that's it. So if you've enjoyed this video, make sure that you send it to somebody else that uh, might be in need of marketing information, really a dialing in their prospect uh, research and development and finding who their competitors are, how to develop their message, picking the right funnel for themselves, and then also how to follow up and then also to get that training. So thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for downloading the research and development workbook. I really hope that it finds you well. I hope you're able to go through it and really 10x your results from here because I really believe that, that this has the power to do that if done properly, if taken seriously, and if in put into effect with massive action. My name is Shane Kipper with Prestige Media. Thank you so much, and I'll see you very soon.